Welcome everybody. We're fellowship here tonight. It is the 25th of September. We'll go ahead and get started. And uh, I'll open up with the word and then we'll hear from Father and <clears throat> get uh, kicked off. Yahweh, we thank you for this evening. Uh, we just intercede for uh, your will to be done, that we are continually aligning ourselves to what your will is and, and uh, pinning our flesh to the, to the cross, that we are following your desires and not our own, and that we are discerning what, what you are telling us to do. Uh, we thank you for that. We thank you for all the believers here. We thank you for the words that you speak, uh, that you are able to just uh, give us comfort, give us joy, also give us correction. And so we thank you for that, that we seek this, so that we are always well-pleasing to you, that we are a blessing and not a burden. And so we thank you for that and the words that you are speaking through us, and we just speak this all through your son's name. So for anybody who would like to, uh, Mr. Holy Spirit, go ahead, please. Blessed children, at this time I am well pleased with you. I see you growing, each one of you, daily. As I'm watching you grow, I'm also encouraging you individually and I'm assisting you individually. Know that the assistance you require is there, just like the peace and the healing and the faith that you require is there. Amen. My sons and daughters, come out before me and call to me that I may be able to uh, to reach you in those dark places that uh, I am always there with you and I'm watching over and so don't don't be waiting just till till things get bad but call out to me in the good and the bad that I may speak to you and that I may steer you away from the holes and the uh, the things that try to ensnare you of this world I'll give a prophecy <clears throat> as you begin each day meditate upon my words that I put inside your life and that's in my word Read that word and let it be part of your life and live it to the fullness. And it shall set you free. It shall lift you up on high with me and my son as you travel this earth, as you acquire many rewards, and as you produce much fruit in order that we may be glorified. Lord of the truth, my plans are wonderful. Take time to look at the stars in the sky and imagine how wonderful I am. Can you, can you even fathom the distances, the energy it takes to burn those stars? Now consider the plans that I have for those who obey me. For your life is an option for you to produce faith and to trust me and obey. And if I can do a whole, all those stars in the sky, what can I do in your life? I can take dirt and turn it into a human being. I can breathe into it. I can split white red seas. And I'm writing a wonderful book if you obey me. Yeah, we thank you for these words and for the sharing this evening and for all those believers here and for those who are not to be with them as well and for uh, speak for Ruth's healing and we just claim that in the name of Christ Jesus. Amen. All right. Mom spoke Swahili with you when she spoke in tongues. What? The very beginning of the Matthew I said what? I love you. Oh, really? That's cool. That's cool. All right, well, let's get started here. Okay, a couple of them here. And when it comes to controlling human beings, there's no better instrument than lies. Because you see, humans live by beliefs, and beliefs can be manipulated. Don't know who this guy was, but I'm like going, pretty accurate quote there. Whenever, therefore, people are deceived and form opinions wide of the truth or void of the truth, it is clear that the error has slid into their minds through the medium of certain resemblances to that truth. Socrates. Socrates. Okay, so I like that because even in the beginning, you think about that, when the adversary came 
He misrepresented the truth, but there were parts of the truth with it. There were parts of Yahweh's word, and then there were parts that were outside of that. And so it's an easy way to sneak in, and it's something that we should be watching as well, especially if something's coming in and it's half truth or part truth or something else with it. And so I, I kind of like that, the, the deceit that you see that comes in there. So we're going to start off by going to Second Peter tonight, page 244. <laughs> Page 244, 2 Peter 2, 18 and 19. And I'll read that here. For great swelling words of vanity, uttering thy, int they, enti thy sorry, they entice with carnal covetings in wanton ways, them who are well nigh escaping from the men who in error have their behavior, promising freedom to them, they themselves being all the while slaves of corruption. For by whom one hath been defeated, by the same hath he become enslaved. Okay, and so we're going to start off here looking at this. And one of the things that I don't know if it's that I feel like I have a, a ministry or calling into it is to call out the things of the world that, are, that creep in and try to sneak in because I think it's important that it gets put out, that what, what's happening and the deceit and what's taking place. And so a couple things for that. I put this as a new religion, okay? But is it a new religion? No. Nothing new about it. Okay, it's new for our day, or is it? Okay, but a new religion here, let's take it a couple things here. So this comes from Climate Depot. Excellent, excellent resource for anybody who ever wants to go to it. It goes, it will break all the climate stuff. It has all the facts, all the charts, it has everything, pages after pages. But a poll here by Rasmussen said that 51% of young believers believe that humanity could be wiped out within 15 years. Well, this is what we're hearing right now. Okay, this is what people are talking about. AOC came out and said that Miami would be underwater in a few years. Okay, that's a lot. what's a few? Well, I would say three. Okay, so this is what we see when we look at this. So, dramatic difference by the age of the question half, 51 of 35 and under, found it likely, somewhat likely, humanity could be wiped out in the next dec decade. Okay, 12% of senior citizens, only 4% of seniors believe it's very likely. So, senior citizens here are pretty much in accord. The one thing that is interesting is 71% degree and find it completely unlikely, okay? But five years ago, it was about 85, 90% found it unlikely. So what's happening is every year this comes out. If you guys remember, not long ago, there was the Ang East Anglia University in Britain. They got busted for manipulating. Their emails got leaked out and they had been putting the sensors in parking lots next to air conditioning vents so that they could make the things different. They could make all the results different. And they got busted on that, and then they went quiet for two years, okay? So that everybody would forget. And now they're back with a vengeance, and it's not going to slow down, and they're going to be a lot care more careful about things happening now. So global warmest, this is the new religion here that we have here. Have an unshakable faith that man-made carbon emissions will produce a hotter climate, causing natural disasters. Their insistence that we can absolutely, absolutely certain that this will come to pass is based not on science, but of faith. And this is why I'm going to show you how this comes out to be. So, in the globalist person, okay, the original sin, mankind is responsible for the disasters. These are prophesied. We told you this would happen. Especially for those who live in the suburbs. Boy, Don and I, we're really bad because we live way outside. We should live in a high-rise downtown, okay? And we shop and we spend money. You're a wicked, evil person for that, okay? The baptism, okay? I was asleep, now I'm woke. Has anybody heard that phrase? No. Woke? Oh, you will, okay? People now, being woke means that you are in tune with what's going on in the world. Social justice. Why don't, why don't you go? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I just looked that up and let her out. Uh, sorry about that, guys. Uh, but the, the woke means that you're in tune with what the world is calling. It's changing all the time. So with the genders, this is part of the woke thing. You're basically in alignment 
with the adversary and all the things that are coming down. That's what being woke means. So when you hear somebody say that, you will actually hear college students say, well, I was woke last year because I realized my white privilege and all the other junk that comes with this, but this is all part of it. That's the baptism. That's the born again right here. I was woke. Being able to see what is real and how to make the changes needed and accept the role and how to deal with my sins. Last week, there was a web page that had a, you could write in and confess all your climate sins. Okay? Oh, yeah. And people, no, I'm not kidding. And people were doing it. I drive to work and I feel so bad for it. But nobody was going to change. I'm like, well, but this was it. You confess your sins. Here's the, you come to the priest and tell them your sins and you confess your carbon sins. And this is what happened last week. So this is the religion. And everybody's looking at it like going, well, this is perfectly normal. Because as you confess it, it might help you change your life. It might make it different. The need for atonement and repentance. We must impose a carbon tax, cap and trade, to raise everything to stagnate economic growth. Okay, this is what's happening. If you guys remember, uh, Obama's green czar, okay, can't remember the guy's name. He came out and he said on mic, that green is the new red. Okay? That was not a mistake. In other words, the way to usher in communism is through the Green New Deal. And if you read the Green New Deal that AOC came out with, right in there, when you get back in there, it was all social justice stuff. It had nothing to do with green. Okay? And so this is just a front to get things through. Rituals. When you remember, you saw this here, I had to laugh because Trump so played that little girl and I, I had to laugh normally I would be like oh don't do that but the way did you guys see his tweet on that I have read it. the girl Greta 16 year old took a boat from Sweden or wherever country she came from took a boat so that she could be carbon neutral what you don't know is there were two airline seats that had all her stuff with people who were bringing all her stuff over oh and yeah she flew back Okay? But that doesn't get talked about. But she came out there and said that how she was ticked off at all these people because they were ruining her future. They stole her child, her, her identity. They took everything from her, and this horrible picture of her that's on the internet, she just looks absolutely ragged. And Trump put a thing out there. It was so nice to see her, and what a wonderful, bright future she must have. And yeah, that's all I said. I'm just like going, boy, just perfect trolling on that one there. I'm like going, did, I mean, you can take however you want, but I'm like going, that was it. But this is what's happening, what's taking place. The rituals, observe Earth Day, we must recycle, openly confess our beliefs. We have to go through these things, and it's, oh, you have to believe it. In China now, they've got the social, the social scoring system, okay? If you do something, Google, by the way, is over there helping them set this up, if you guys didn't know that. Google is helping them implement this in China. They monitor everything, and if you do something that's against the state, they will take away your transportation privileges. So when you go to do transport, you're not allowed to. If you have too much bad in one week, you're restricted to your house for the whole week. It also includes shopping. It includes all kinds of stuff. This is the stuff that they try to do, those rituals. that You're going to have to bow down to this, or we're going to make it very tough for you. One thing is missing in this new religion. Who knows what that is? Yahweh. Okay? There's no more worry about separation of church and state. Okay? Oh, we don't have to worry about that anymore. This new religion, the state will make it the new church obey. Okay? You will do what we tell you to. And so this is where we're going, and I see the things coming like this, and so we'll be able to fight against this. Here's another thing. Well, you talk about hypocrites. This guy here. Do you know they asked him if he wanted to run for president because they were worried about Biden not being able to make it? And he is so uber wealthy right now that he's like going, no, it's not worth it. not worth doing it. But fake meat billionaire lobbies climate policies that would get rid of meat while firm invests $200 million in meat substitutes. Okay, this is the kind of junk that you have. Okay, oh, and, but he, he pays so that he's carbon neutral. Okay, so yeah, he's carbon neutral. Yes, he flies around on a giant airplane with just him and a couple of other people, but he plants trees so that it's okay. That's his rituals to offset his sins. Here's just a quick thing I pulled up here that was very interesting with the hypocrisy as well. Do you see the date on this? 21st of this month. Uh, look at the bottom part of that there. Iowa steak fry for the 2020 Democratic presidential. Okay. Here's the guy here, the chairman there of the Polk County. This is where this was held. Organizers sold more than 12,000 tickets, purchased more than 10,500 steak, 
plus vegan options. Okay, 1,800 candidates. The biggest steak fry in history, he said. This is right off the internet. And they're, while they're banning meat and pushing meat out where you're going to, they already come out with this this week where they want to start charging taxes for beef because of the methane that they produce. Okay, it's another control mechanism that's happening. These things coming down and the, the serving the flesh, the new religion, and the sad thing is, is you have places that, and churches now that are taking a little bit in at a time, taking a little bit in at a time, and, and we're slowly working. So in California, most of the churches have already succumbed to all this stuff here. Well, so they, not the U.S., so. No, it's <laughs> not. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. So... Decision factors, okay, as, uh, as we're going through here, the sharing tonight is flesh or spirit, okay? Because you're going to serve one or the other. Who was it, the Johnny Cash song who said that? Or it was Bob Dylan, okay? You're going to serve somebody. You're going to serve somebody, okay? And this is it, freedom from destruction of serving your flesh. So we either walk by spirit or we walk by flesh, but you're going to do one or the other. And it's a constant battle, and the world is going to pull you to walk by the flesh, and so it's a, we have to fight that develops our thoughts, motives, beliefs, therefore our behavior. And so if we are not pushing and walking by spirit, we are going to be pushed and walking by flesh. And this is a battle that we deal with about every single minute of the day, okay? And it continually is raining down on us. Whoops, sorry here, rolled backwards. No longer slave to flesh, but to righteousness. So again, when I say this here, uh, one thing I'll, I will say is that you are going to be a slave to one or the other. And it is not a bad thing to be a slave to righteousness. That's exactly where you want to be. Okay, so let's flip over here to page 155, Romans 6. <clears throat> if somebody would read that for me, I'll give my voice a little break here. 12 through 18 of chapter 6. Let not Go ahead, Mel, you can do it. Let not sin therefore reign in your death doomed body, that ye should be obedient to its coverings. Neither be presenting your members as weapons of unrighteousness unto sin, but present yourselves unto Yahweh as though alive from among the dead, and your members as weapons of righteousness unto Yahweh. For sin over you shall not have lordship, for ye are not under law, but under favor. What then shall we sin, because we are not under law, but under favor? Far be it. Know ye not that unto whom ye are presenting yourselves as servants for, for obedience, servants ye are unto him unto him unto whom ye are obedient, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But thanks be under Yahweh that whereas ye were servants of sin, ye became obedient out of the heart unto unto the mold of teaching unto which ye were delivered, and being freed from sin were made servants unto righteousness. That's it. That's exactly it. So freed from it. Uh, servants of righteousness, not servants of flesh. Okay? Servants of flesh. And so we've all gone through this. We've all heard this. But it's one of those things that it continually keeps coming and it keeps coming and it doesn't stop. And where we beef up, the world comes at us from every direction. And so we have to be ready to be serving Yahweh this, and, and walking by spirit instead of walking by flesh. Go to Galatians. Flip forward here a few pages to 194. Galatians 5. Galatians 5, 16 and 18. <clears throat> and I'll read that. I say moreover, by spirit be walking and fleshly coveting ye will in no wise fulfill. For the flesh coveteth against the spirit, but the spirit against the flesh. For those unto one another are opposed, lest whatsoever things ye chance to desire, these ye should be doing. And if by spirit you are being led, you are not under law. Okay? And so what we are is we're, we're making ourselves, we're voluntarily putting ourselves into servitude for obedience and under righteousness. Anybody recognize that? Any of you chicks? 
Bumpus. But who's? As Jack Sparrow. That is Jack Sparrow's. That's right. And you remember Jack Sparrow's compass? They sell, when I searched it out, because I was like, going through there, I'm like going, oh yeah, Jack. It reminded me of the compass. And I'm like going, so I typed in Jack Sparrow compass or Pirates of the Caribbean mm -hmm. compass. And man, it came up with about 15 different sites who sell a replica of this. I started oh. laughing. I didn't know it was so popular. <laughs> but the whole thing of it, if you remember in the movie, it would point to what? What he desires. What he desired most. And so what was it doing most of the time? Spinning around. Okay, spinning around. Okay, and so when I see that, I'm like going, man, how many times in my life have I done that? Where I'm like going, my, oh, what am I chasing after? And you think to that of the world. What the chasing from here to there. Well, this doesn't work. Let's go to this next one. Let's go to this one. And we'll try everything before we, well, let's just humble ourselves and see if there's something else. Okay, so when we look at this, where is our course and navigation inputs coming from? Because they are coming from somewhere. You're getting them from something. Okay, and if we're just going along nonchalant, just, you know, on a raft down a river or a raft on an ocean, we're just going to drift wherever it takes us. Okay, and that's not what Yahweh's calling us to do. So remember, being slightly off course, the deviations drastically change the destination. I told you that. One degree over 60 miles puts you one mile off course. That's a tiny fraction. When we'd be flying and navigating, the navigator would constantly be updating. And we'd fly over something, he'd update everything, so that you would, because if you don't keep updating your course, you're going, that one degree is going to put you way off. Think about that if you're airdropping somebody, and you're a mile off, okay? That, that's a, that you could put them into harm's way, or put them, put them over the water, you could put them somewhere that they should not be. That's how critical it is, and those course corrections have to be coming in continually. Update, course correction, course correction, course correction. Checking in, finding out exactly where we're going, make sure we're on track, and you're able to do it the way we would course correct. You fly over something, and you're like, well, I know that that is right here on this map. This shows that we are on course, okay? Or if you flew it and you're like, it's way over there, okay, we are off course. And so you would, that's how you would course correct. And we can do that the same way in our lives. So if I'm like going, okay, what's going on here? Something's not going right. Let's check in to make sure things can happen. Remember I did the teaching about David where he was walking as father and yet everything was taken from him and his people. Okay, and it looked like, how'd you miss this, David? That can't happen, but be checking in. Checking in for the courses so that we're not stumbling over things that Yahweh's like going, you know, as soon as you come to me, I'll tell you, I'll instruct you, I'll, I'll update your course for you as long as you're checking in. Okay, so let's go back here to Romans, to page 157, chapter 8. Romans 8, 5 through 13, and if somebody would read that for me, give me just a second to get to it here. 8, 5 through 13. For they who according to flesh have their being, the things of the flesh do prefer, but they according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. For what is preferred by the flesh is death. Whereas what is preferred by the spirit is life and peace, inasmuch as what is preferred by the flesh is hostile towards Yahweh. For unto the law of Yahweh it doth not submit itself, neither in fact can it. They moreover who in flesh have their being cannot please Yahweh. But ye have not your being in flesh, but in spirit. For if at least Yahweh's spirit dwelt in you, then, and if anyone hath not Christ's spirit, the same is not his. But, if Christ is in you, the body indeed is dead by reason of sin, whereas the spirit is life by reason of righteousness. If, moreover, the spirit of him that raised Yahushua from among the dead dwelleth in you, he that raised from among the dead Christ Yahushua shall make alive even your death-doomed body through means of his indwelling spirit within you. Hence then, brethren, debtors we are, not unto the flesh, that according to the flesh we should live. And 13. For if according to flesh you live, you are about to die. Whereas, if in spirit the practices of the flesh you are putting to death, you shall attain unto life. That's it. And so completely backwards. And it always, whenever I read that, it always reminds me of 
the series there of Band of Brothers. And there, it was a true story of the, the guys, it was Easy Company, and they were all Rangers that dropped in on, on D-Day. And uh, what they did was just incredible. And it was a true story of them. And one of the guys that they had was a horrible leader. And he would, every time battle would start, he'd go back, well, I have to go back to the command post. And so these guys were left leaderless. And one of the guys rose up, it was an enlisted guy, and he became their leader and did excellent. And they gave him a commission at the end of this. Well, it finally came out where they're like, well, we need somebody in here that can lead these guys. We're getting ready to go into another big city and it's gonna be a big battle. And one of the guys that they pulled in was this guy that was just, I mean, he's just incredible. He volunteered for everything, and it would go, we need to go take these three guns. And he'd go, he'd grab like three guys, let's go get them. And he'd go hit one, and while they were trying to set up a team to go get the other guns, they would be running across the field, chasing him down and knocking them all out, and just taking them all down. And the guy was just fearless, he didn't care. He would always be right out in front, going with it. And so one of the guys, one of the, the Easy Company guys, was having a hard time and he came and talked to him. He goes, what your problem is, is you still think you're alive. He goes, until you deem yourself dead, you are not gonna be able to perform. You've got to already consider yourself, you're dead. And then you will perform and you'll be that good soldier. And every time I read that, I'm like, well, it's so backwards that you would think that, that okay, body's dead, that the, the flesh is dead, and the flesh is only going to ensnare me and pull me away, and it's going to entice me into things. Everything from food, from, from uh, sexual things, from money things, from things that you desire are going to be there to, to pull you away and yank you away and, and cause you to trip up. And so we have to, so I say it's a continual battle to put the, the flesh to death. And until we do that and say, no, you are dead. You are no longer, I'm not in servitude to you. I am in servitude to Yahweh. I am in servitude to Christ. Okay, and until we do that, we're gonna, it's, it's a tough thing to do, but you, it's an everyday thing that has to be done. Flesh and spirit. Okay, so I love this picture here that I found this here, this train going across in India. And it says, which of these get tempted, feels isolated, gets offended, and jealous? Flesh or spirit? Okay, and absolutely, and so we see this thing. So the spirit's not getting tempted; it's the flesh that's being tempted. And so as we as we fight against those things and feel those things, we have to realize where it's coming from. Because guess what? Those same inputs that we're getting for course corrections are also coming for course deviations, and they come in strong. You, you need this. Look at this. Oh, you've been really good. Look how long you've gone. You deserve this. It's okay to do this. Everybody's doing this. It's all right. Look, even the church accepts this now. And this is where we see, and you're like going, okay, where is this coming from? Because if it's coming from one of those things where I'm being tempted, spirit's not going to tempt me. Okay? And so walking on it. So think of it as a train. What happens when train cars decide to go their own course? Okay? One car is too heavy. The wheels break or fall. Okay, or they, the, the, the track switches right as the middle as the train's going across it. What happens to it? Derails, okay? Comes to a screeching halt. So we gotta think of it, I thought this was a great anal, uh, analogy for this. A train can operate safely by having one conductor, okay? People always think of the engineer, but it's actually the conductor who signs off and then goes to the engineer and tells, fire it up and get going. The conductor's in charge. It is his say, his say and his say only. He is the top dog. One destination where the train's going. All engines have to be pulling or pushing in one direction or this train is doomed, okay? It is not going to stay on tracks. It's going to get diverted. It's gonna be fighting. It's gonna be breaking down. Things are gonna be coming off. And obviously with the train, things come off track. It's pretty devastating, okay? Well, we have to look at it the same way for ourselves. Who's our conductor, okay? What's our destination? And the push-pull that we're getting is coming from who or coming from where? So think of it this way as well. Adversary doesn't have to make cold calls. So when I first got in this business, you know, we're talking about cold calls and they're really not, for our business, it really wasn't cold calls because we're calling people who need this. So if I call somebody, if I buy a list of people who are looking for homes and I tell them, hey, I sell homes, okay? That's not a cold call. We know those people are looking for it. Well, it's the same way for the adversary. The adversary doesn't need to make cold calls. Guess what? The adversary knows what you want. The adversary knows what tempts you, and he knows it really well. Okay? So the adversary comes calling. It's not cold. He's right in tune with what you want. Knows your number. He knows what you want. Okay? 
the temptations are linked to each individual person. So you, what, what my temptations will be could be completely different from this person, different from this person, different from this person. Okay? But the adversary knows what works, what works with this person. Use your caller ID. Okay? Be able to decipher, hey, if this is coming in, remember, if this is temptation, I'm feeling it, I need to quickly identify, this is temptation. And guess what? My caller ID says, that's not the spirit that's calling me in this direction. Okay, That's my flesh that's doing it. So this is our caller ID. Don't answer it, for crying out loud. Flip over to Proverbs 27, page 631. Proverbs 27, verse 20. Okay, you see where it says Hades? That's Sheol. So in Proverbs 27, verse 20, Sheol and destruction are not satisfied, and the eyes of a man are not satisfied. Okay, there is no filling the flesh and being content. It is a bottomless pit that will never ever be filled. And you can look at any life of somebody who had made it to the top and didn't have Christ. It was a bottomless pit and a ruin and a wreck that they, that they ended up into. Okay, And this is the exact same way. We can't do it. And so again, when we feel those temptations coming, it's not like, okay, you know, the adversary will tell you, it'll be fine just this one time. It'll be fine to do it this one time. It's okay. It's all right. Okay? No. It's never going to be satisfied. It cannot be satisfied. Go to Galatians here, 3.3, 3, page 192, and we we're probably pretty close to there before. I probably should have told you to put a ribbon in there, but sorry. 192, and I'll let somebody else read that one here for me. Galatians 3.3. 3. All right. <clears throat> so thoughtless are ye, having made a beginning in Ruach, are you now in flesh to be made complete? That's it. That's it. And so again, the, the, the call, the call that just because just because somebody just because somebody does Romans 10, 9, and 10, does the it's not the end of the battle. Okay? Remember it's a race. We have to always think of this as a race. And to complete the race is all the way through your life. It's not an ending. It's not going to get better when you hit 60 years old or 70 or 80 or 90. The things are still going to be there and it's a complete thing. And so starting off in the spirit doesn't mean that, okay, everything's great. It's going to be hunky-dory from here out. It's a constant battle that, we, that we're that we subject to. Flip over here about a page. Galatians 5.1. With her freedom... Christ hath made you free. Stand fast, therefore, and do not again with the yoke of servitude be held fast. Okay? So with this here, I also put the authorized version of this as well. Stand fast means to persevere. Okay, I think everybody understands that, but to stand fast, persevere. This is referring to people who have already accepted Christ. Okay? You've already been paid for, you've already been bought persevere now the fight's not over the fight is kicking in okay stand fast persevere therefore in the liberty wherewith christ has made us free the price has been paid it's been done it can't be paid again it's been paid once and it's been paid once and all and be not entangled again okay meaning to go back it refers to it if you look at any of the notes it refers to it as the swine after it's washed what does it do it goes right back to the mire Okay, goes right back into it. That's what they're referring to. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage or servitude. And so again, that's where we're, okay, we're paid for. It's done to put this away and not to be going back for this, to stand fast. And that's the big thing is that, that, that when those temptations, when the things come, to persevere and realize that we've already been bought, we've already been paid for, that we have the authority to do this. Matthew. Matthew 11. Page 11. So, if somebody would please read for me 28 through 30. Yeah, I will. <clears throat> Come unto me, all ye that toil and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, because meek am I and lowly in heart. 
and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden light. That's it. And so we're still called into a yoke, okay? A yoke of Christ, all right? And not a yoke of the world. And if we don't continually put that yoke on, the world is going to yoke you as well. And so that's where we have to be able to say, no, we are going to be servants and we are going to be slaves, but we are going to be slaves of Christ. All right, I'll go ahead and close here with the word. <clears throat> Yahweh, we thank you for again for this day. We thank you for your words. Uh, thank you for the ability to share. We thank you for all the blessings that you've given to us that we come before you uh, on bended knee, humbled, and with thanksgiving in our heart, uh, singing praises to you and uh, speaking to you and, and not just coming to you with our, with our desires, but also speaking to you of the great things that you've done, being praiseworthy to you and just uh, on our knees worshiping before you. We thank you for that. We thank you for the words uh, that, you, that you continually give to us that we are freely to pour these out. So we thank you for this all through your son's name, Christ Jesus. My sons and daughters, do not, let the, do not let the animals of this world, that the beasts of this world, do not let them control you. Do not let them be nipping at your heels and be biting at you to corral you or push you into uh, the corner or the area that, that, that the, the world is trying to do. But realize that you are above them, that, that uh, my son has already paid for all these things and you have the authority and to be casting out these things and cursing against these things and standing firm against these things and it will be as water hitting against the side of a rock cliff that will break apart these things and so stand bold knowing that as you are coming before me that I will speak words that my words uh, are the the sword of the spirit that you will speak these and uh, just cut through the clutter, cut through the garbage of this world that you may find the pure that is within me and within my words. Amen. Hallelujah.